Welcome to step 12 where we are really looking at a real world example with Mockito. We are going to look at an example project where we use the Spring framework. We would have a business layer, a data layer and different kinds of Maven projects and we would try and set this example up and see all the code that's written in here. As far as the Mockito is concerned, then you would see that the tests that we write in this project are not any different from the tests that we wrote in the earlier steps. This step is just to give you an overview and get give you a feel of how real world tests, even in complex environments, can be really simple when you use Mockito along with Spring. Let's get started. If you look at our GitHub repository Mockito tutorial for beginners, there's a zip file which is present down here. So it's called Mockito real world example with Spring. What we would do is actually import this project as a Maven project. So we would go to Eclipse, import this as a Maven project, and then we would try and see what code is in there. First thing we would do is download it. So take your favorite download. It's not a big file as such, so you can download it in a few seconds. Less than that, I would say. So I'll go ahead and say right click save link as and or download, whichever you would want to. What I've done is I've extracted this zip file and I've put it in the folder Mockito real world example with Spring. You'd see these folders directly here, business, data, model, and Decim. What we have done is basically we took the zip which was there. So we took the zip from Mockito tutorial for beginners real world example. I just clicked on it, took the zip, extracted it to this particular folder. So you'd see this is the content of that particular zip file. So you'd have a pom.xml and you'd have a business data, model, and everything kind of stuff. I would want to import this project into my workspace. The way you can import a Maven project into your workspace is by saying file, import, type in Maven. So type in Maven, and I would want to actually import a existing Maven project. So I would say existing Maven project, and say next. Um, I'll want to use a different folder so I know where it is, so I would want to actually browse through that folder. This is the folder where I extracted it to. You can see it, it's done just now. So I would go ahead and open that. And you'd see a set of pro Maven projects. You don't need, really need to worry about all of them. And just go ahead and click finish. You'd see a lot of projects imported in. So you can see a lot of layers, a lot of things that is imported in here. Uh, you don't really need to understand every bit of it. I mean, it's just to show a really real world project where you have a multiple sub projects and things like that. Before we start with any of this, we'll try and get an overview of this particular project. This sample project has a business layer and a data layer. And in the business layer, we have an API and IMPL. And the same in the case of a data layer, API and IMPL. If you understand the concept of interface and implementation, then API contains all interfaces and IMPL contains all the implementations of those interfaces. So for example, similar with data, API contains the interfaces and IMPL contains the implementations. Typically in a multi-layered application, your business layer depends on your data layer. So the data layer gets the data from the database and the business layer kinds of has the business logic. So over here, if you look at it, we have the data layer consisting of two APIs. So one is the product DO and the other one is client DO. So product data object and client data object. You can think that these two would talk to the database or talk to an interface, get the details and the client BOIMPL depends on these to calculate the client products sum. Let's say there is a client for whom there is there are different kind of products. You can kind of picture this in any kind of business environment. So you have a client. The client has a number of products. So the client BO IMPL talks to the product DO and the client DO and it would get all the details and then calculate the client product sum and return it back. So what we want to do is we are writing the tests for this particular method. So the things which we would want to mock are the dependencies. The dependencies are product DO and the client DO. So 
if you look at it from the mockito perspective then product do and client do i would like to mock them so that i'll be able to test the client bo impl so i would want to test the client bo impl mocking product do and the client do so if that was confusing not a problem take some time and look at the code inside your eclipse right now so let's do that right now if you look at the data api there is a client do and a product do let's directly go to the business api the business api the methods that we would want to test are there are three methods um, get client product sum save changed products and calculate and save client product sum so those are the three methods that we would want to test and if you look at the implementations of them they are present in the business impl so source main java and the business impl has the client bo impl dot java i'll open this up it's client bo impl as we said the dependencies for it are product do and the client do since it's using the spring project you would say at autowired this is an at service if uh, the spring annotations do not make sense to you then i would recommend to go through our spring course um, it's a free course and you should be able to understand spring completely through that but uh, if you do not have the time to go through the entire spring course you can kind of think of autowired as a way i am saying the client bi mpl is dependent on the product do and i am not really doing a new product do here so what happens is spring would create the new product do impl and it would inject it in so the dependencies are automatically managed by the dependency management framework which is spring and they would be injected in here so we have three methods in here one of the methods first methods if you look at it is get client products sum so the first method what it does is it uses the product do it sends a client id gets all the products and it actually sums them up so it calculates the client product sum that basically if you look at it it just takes the, all the products and sums them up so this is like a typical business method in any real world project so when uh, you are in this kind of situation you would see that the way we write unit tests for it so the test if you remember it's the same package so you can see that over here so it's the same package as the uh, main thing and you would see that we are using mockito to write the test so the first line we use our mockito runner so we need to be able to run this particular thing we are using a runner here one of the exercises that you can do is to convert this to use a rule so this is using mockito runner so you can try and change it to mockito rule and see if there is any difference konjam se baaga mostuna what you can see here is we are declaring the mocks we want to test the client bo impl and if you look at the client bo impl the dependencies are product do and client do so what we are saying is at mock product do and at mock client do so we are creating mocks for product do and the client do and we are doing an inject mocks into the client bo impl so what would happen is the client bo impl would be created and these two mocks would be injected in so that's basically what we are doing and if you look at the test for test product sum what we are doing is we are creating a set of products we are looking at creating a couple of products and we are stubbing the product do get all products because that's the method which is used in this thing so it's using get all products so what we are doing is we are stubbing it to return the list of products that we have so one product has amount 5 the other product has amount 6 so once the method is called what we are checking is we are checking whether client bo dot get product sum i can refactor this a little bit to make it even clear so we have client product sum coming as an output from there so i'm checking whether the client product sum has a currency value of 11 so that's the test we are writing it's a very simple mockito test uh, so but if you look at the entire project it's a very complex kind of a project there are multiple layers there are it's completely managed by spring there are spring configuration files and things like that but at the end when i write the test it's no different from writing any other test that's the beauty of unit testing right so in such a big system i'm able to isolate the functionality so client product sum i'm checking whether it's really working fine so i wrote a test uh with the mocks to return a specific set of products and i am checking whether that product sum 
matches. So with this kind of a test, I am sure that the get client product sum is properly written. The next method that we have in client BOIMPL is save changed products. So basically you can kind of think of a specific client has a list of products. They are editing it on the UI and they are sending the final list of products here. And what we do in this method is compare the values which are coming from the screen. So the values which are coming from the screen, that's basically the user entered products are compared with the database products. So we talk to the database, get all the products. We check whether the user entered products match the database products. And if there are specific products that needs to be updated, they would be updated. If there are new products, then they would be inserted. And if they are old products, they would be deleted. So if user entered like from the screen, I only get five products and let's say there are uh, 10 products in the database, then the five at least have to be deleted. So those ones are stale products. So those are deleted. So you can spend some time looking at this specific method logic, how it does it. Uh, it's, it's a very simple implementation. You can spend some time with it. The idea is to just show you quickly that, uh, the Mockito test would not be any different, uh, even in complex kind of scenarios. So this is kind of a complex kind of a scenario. If you see the test that we are writing for that particular method, this one says save changed products, product in screen, not in database, that product is inserted. So we are check testing the save product method, uh, sorry, save changed products method. And what we are checking here is the product is in screen, but not in database we are taking a product which is in screen. So user entered it. So user entered a new product that's in the screen, but it's not in the database. So that's basically a new product that the user is entering. So it's not in the database, but user is entering right now on the screen. Then product should be inserted because that product, the insert method should be called. So what we are doing is that here. So screen products, we are just creating a sample product and empty database products because we don't want anything in the product. And then I'm actually stubbing the get all products to return the empty database products. And I'm calling the save changed products method with the screen products. I'm doing this stuff and you can see that I'm checking, I'm verifying. So this is a example for the verify method. So I'm verifying that insert product is called with the product that is so this product has to be inserted. I should not call delete product or update product. On this specific product, I should call the insert product method. Similarly, you would see that there are other test cases. So save change products, product in both screen and database. Then what should be happening? Then it should be updated with the new details. So we are creating a screen product, a database products, and we are seeing the screen, like we are stubbing the thing usually. And then we are calling the save change products and we are seeing that the update product is called on a specific thing. And the next test scenario is product is in database, but not on the screen. So you'd see that here delete product has to be called because the product is there in the database, but this user uh, like from the data we got from the screen, it's not there. So it basically means that user wanted to delete it. So when the method comes in, we would want to delete that particular product. So we are checking that the delete product method is called. So similar to this, we have another complex test that we have where we are using a argument matcher. So we use the argument matcher to catch the client product sum, which is saved to the database. So if you look at the client BO method, this one does not only calculates the client product sum, but also saves it to the database. So you can look at this test as well. One of the important things about this particular step is that our objective was not to really get you to understand everything in here. I mean, that's like, there's a lot of business logic in here. You need to understand client BO, product DO, client DO, a lot of business logic that you would need to understand. But the most important thing that we wanted to show through this example was even in the real world projects, how you write the Mockito unit test will not be different at all. We would still be using either a Mockito rule or a Mockito runner. We would use at mock annotation, at mock inject mocks, at capture to capture the arguments. So this is exactly a very complex test in a business scenario. And you can see that the kind of 
constructs that we are using for Mockito are exactly the same. One of the good things that you can actually try and look at this test and try and replicate in your projects is how the test is organized, how the methods are named. You can also see that there are certain conventions which are used to make the test very readable. So you can try and spend some time on this real world project and try and get whatever you would want to get out of it. So the attempt was not to get you to understand everything in here. I mean, that's practically uh, uh, like it's, this is almost like a new project you would be working on. So that will generally not be successful. So the idea was not to really get you to understand every uh, business logic which is in here. But the idea is to show that the test with Mockito can be written in a very simple way, irrespective of how complex your project is. Hopefully, you had a good time understanding this. If there are specific parts that you did not understand, that's okay. The most important thing that we want to understand is the concepts of Mockito. Until next step, bye-bye. There is one question we are frequently asked. What do I learn next? Our In 28 Minutes course guide has the answer to that question. Think about this for a moment. What gives most satisfaction to a course creator? Lots of money? Yeah, it does. But what else? Great reviews. Yay, that's it. For me, the happiest moments are when I really receive great reviews. And we had 1500 such moments in the last 8 months. So that's 1500 5 star reviews in the last 8 months alone. Thank you for that. These reviews really reflect what we wanted to achieve when we started in 28 minutes. There is one question we are frequently asked. What do I learn next? Our In 28 Minutes course guide has the answer to that question. It has the details of our most popular free and paid courses. You will find a link to it in the description of the video. Let's take a quick overview of the different courses that we created for you. As Kevin says, the Java EE Made Easy course gives you the big picture. There are a lot of pieces that make up the Java EE and this course would help you to understand how all the pieces fit together. The Spring MVC course takes you through a journey of building a web app in 25 easy steps. As Alexander says, we follow the 2080 principle and take you through a great journey with Java Servlets and JSP, building a Java EE web application in 25 easy steps. Maven is the dependency management framework used in more than 80% of the projects. This course takes you through a journey with Maven with real world examples. And we have courses on C for beginners and also C puzzles for interview preparation. We have a huge list of free courses as well. Spring, Eclipse, JUnit, Design Patterns, Java, Test Driven Development, Transaction Management, JavaScript, Java Collections, Mockito. And we are number one on YouTube for Java interview questions. Good luck with your learning. Always remember that the best way to learn is by doing. You would never learn riding a bike by just watching somebody do that. Similar to that, learning programming is all about getting your hands dirty. Keep getting your hands dirty and good luck.